welcome to What's Up With Power. This week, we're going to be covering FTP and FTP tests and everything around that. Uh, we're a little bit late getting going, but uh, the ride is rolling here, and I will talk a little bit about the format as we roll out. So this is a um, group ride where we're going to be teaching about the concepts of power. It's based on the book called Training and Racing with the Power Meter by Hunter Allen and Andrew Hagen. And we're basically here to help you learn the concepts of power-based training so you can take your training to the next level. So uh, we've had two weeks thus far. We've covered chapters one and chapter two of the book. Uh, this week we're gonna be covering chapter three. We're gonna talk about what is FTP? Why does everyone talk about it? Why, why is there so much buzz around this word FTP? What exactly is it? Um, so, if you don't have the book, Training and Racing with the Power Meter, I highly suggest getting it as a reference to go along with this material. There's a lot of stuff that I, I skip over or I provide basically the Cliff Notes version, but I feel like you can get a lot more by just going and, and digging in after we have these discussions. So the format of the event, we're going to have 15 minutes of, of instruction followed by 15 minutes of questions and answers. And we have people live with us in Discord that can answer questions. We can get a, one of them to say something to us here. You can We'll see, see about names. that. Yeah, yep. Good see morning. their names pop up over here. So you can see who's chatting with us and when they have questions, you'll know who's hey, asking. Bussy, Candy Organ. Howdy, Let's howdy. So, without any further ado, I'm going to switch here to a slide presentation I have for today and so we're going to basically cover three topics uh, around FTP uh, and basically what's next with training with power. We'll talk about data collection, getting a feel for the data, doing a structured FTP test and we're going to talk about power-based training levels, kind of why we do the FTP test. So, so data collection, what are we talking about here? So we've got this brand new power meter we want to train with power, so what do we do? Well, honestly, first thing you really want to do is get a feel for what those power numbers mean. So, I mean, you basically want to kind of start to develop this intuition, if you will, of how hard you're going to have to push for different power. So, one good test might be, well, what does it feel like to actually put out, say, 300 watts? So, get a feel for it. what does that mean in terms of your heart rate? How do you feel, you know? And just basically, generally, you're going to want to watch those power numbers. <coughs> in your outdoor rides, if you have an outdoor power meter, obviously it's on the screen all the time in Zwift, but I would suggest paying even closer attention to it. Um, and then, one of the one of the good, one of the awesome things about taking the power meter outside is once you go do these routes and rides or big hills that you're used to doing, you. Uh, you basically go back and analyze, okay, I just know what that hill felt like in terms of speed and heart rate before, but now what did my power data look like? So you basically want to go back, see that data that's been collected and start to analyze and, and get an intuition for what that, what, the, what those numbers start to mean. Okay, so we've got all this data collecting, but clearly that's not the end game. So <laughs> the end game here is structured training, understanding where you're at, um, getting objective numbers to help you understand where you should take your training. So a lot of this is based around having correctly adjusted functional threshold power. What And so this is what we call FTP, functional threshold power. What does it mean? There are very lengthy physiological descriptions, but in layman's terms, your functional threshold power is the average power that you could hold for 60 minutes and be just completely drained at the end. If you were able to perfectly pace yourself for 60 minutes and hold that average power and just be drained at the end, that's what functional threshold power is. So now how do you get that number? Uh, so it was actually some structured tests that, that don't boil down to an hour of pain actually, so it's only a mere 20 minutes. But uh, so 
This is the test you can see on the bottom of the screen for those watching live. Uh, that's what the workout looks like when you pull it up in the, the Zwift editor. That's got an FTP set at 200. Basically, you're going to have a warm up. You're going to have a couple sections where you're spinning the legs up, getting your heart rate going, just activating your legs. And then it boils down to 20 minutes where you go, you pick a pace that you believe will be really hard for you to hold for 20 minutes, but you, you feel like it's, it's achievable. You want to push yourself and you hold that for 20 minutes. <laughs> and then you have a cool down at the end. So how do we get to the FTP from this test? You take that 20 minute section, you calculate the average power of that 20 minute section, and you take 95% of that number. So um, that's, and that essentially, if you were well rested, you could take whatever that number is coming after your 20 minute test, you should be able to hold that for an entire hour, 95% of whatever it was. So, so that's how you get to an FTP number. And that's, that's what all the workouts in Zwift or structured workouts, they're all gonna be scaled. The watts in these tests will be scaled based on what your, um, what your threshold power is. And so if you, if you go into the workout editor in Zwift and you take that FTP slider and you move it up and down, you're gonna see all the, the bars get taller or shorter. Because when these people design these workouts, they actually describe them typically in terms of watts relative to your FTP, percentage of FTP, rather than absolute watts. Okay, so, so we've got an FTP. Let's say our FTP is 200 watts for the purposes of this discussion. So, okay, cool. What do I do now, or what does that mean? Well, you probably have heard a little bit about the different training levels, or power-based training levels. So, these are essentially seven different ranges of power. These ranges are defined in terms of percentage of your FTP, and they describe uh, basically, these different power levels, when you work in these different zones, it's going to stress different parts of your body, and it's going to cause different physiological gains or physical improvements in your body based on training in these different zones. So, active recovery is essentially if you're at about 55% of your FTP, you're lower. So, um, the next step up is endurance. 55 to 75 percent, then you move into tempo, 76 to 90 percent, lactate threshold, 91 percent to 105 percent, VO2 max is the next one up, anaerobic capacity, and neuromuscular power, meaning just complete, no holding back as hard as you can absolutely go. That's what zone seven is. Um, so, <clears throat> this chart here has some. Uh, time, the far right column talks about essentially how much time you could, in general, you should be able to hold these zones for. So we see active recovery, you should be able to hold your active recovery pace for 70 to 80 years, it says. Okay, well, there might be some other constraints like, I don't know, going to the bathroom, sleeping, getting older, that might get in the way. But uh, as you move up, you start to see, okay, endurance. You should be able to hold endurance for anywhere from 14 days. So this is, obviously we're not doing 14 day long bike rides, but um, so tempo, um, does that seem right? You can do tempo for two and a half hours? Yeah, okay. Uh, and then you see your threshold, start to hold it anywhere from 10 to 60 minutes. Now, okay, now you move up to VO2 max. Really VO2 max, probably only gonna be able to hold for somewhere between three to eight minutes. Anaerobic capacity, now we're talking 30 seconds to two minutes long, and neuromuscular power, you're only gonna hold these efforts for maybe five or 15 seconds at max. So, now let's, let's talk. This next chart, I'm not even sure if this is gonna be viewable well on the broadcast, but I'll talk through it. So I talked about each zone causes different physiological changes, and that's what this chart is attempting to describe for us. So you see the columns are the different seven power training zones. Each row 
is a different physiological change in the body. And so then each zone gets ranked on how much of a change in that particular physiological trait will happen when you train in that zone. So you'll notice the active recovery column it, it's not going to, the whole purpose of active recovery is not to stress the body, it's to help blood flow through the muscles. So you shouldn't be stressing yourself at all in active recovery. On the far other side, we see neuromuscular power. It actually was sh short, really hard, all out um, sprints. They are not going to help you improve, say, your lactate threshold they will absolutely increase your neuromuscular power. Uh, so on the other hand, if I'm gonna, if I go out and do a workout where I'm holding my FTP, or my lactate threshold there, zone four, you can see that's gonna give me really good responses in um, increasing lactate threshold, increasing muscle glycogen storage, increasing plasma volume. And so you can, these, this chart basically shows you relatively how much each of these is going to give you uh, improvement on. It would make sense the VO2 max power zone, imagine this, is, it's going to increase your VO2 max. I think that's why they named it that way. So this is a good chart basically to help you understand why we get an FTP because then when we start doing structured workouts we can really hone in what part of our physiological system we're trying to improve. What do we what are, we, what are we trying to make better? What, what do we want our body to be more efficient at? And so then we train in those zones to get those different responses. Okay, so that is the end of the prepared content I have for today. Um, so we're going to move to our Q&A session. Q&A session can be any topic covered today, covered in the last two weeks, not covered at all in this class related to power training that's been burning on your mind. You can go ahead and let your questions fly on Zwift Live, on, on Facebook Live. We'll relay those to me. You can ask them in Discord. You can go ahead and uh, also just say them, type them. So let's open it up for any questions that might exist. I think you blew everyone's minds because this is the quietest it's ever been. I just thought <laughs> <you and Ed. laughs> Paying attention. One thing I, I guess I'd want to say along the physiological responses there, and we had this discussion I think last week, somebody asked, well, how do I increase my FTP? Honestly, train at your FTP. Do FTP intervals, do 15 minute long, 20 minute long intervals at your FTP. That's, you're stressing that system, so that's what you're going to improve. Doing sprints well, is... Sorry to interrupt you, but, but just, you couldn't see that chart very well that you had up on the screen, but it, I don't, I couldn't tell if the sweet spot column was there, but that's why they call it the sweet spot. You're getting the most bang for the buck training at that level. Yeah. Uh, you're getting an FTP boost, you're getting an endurance boost, you're, you're getting a bonus on like three or four areas and that's why it's a sweet spot it's not the sweet spot because it feels good it's just under FTP it's, it's a hard effort but you're getting the most value and bang for buck yeah so I'm, so I'm drawing I'm trying to show with my mouse here put the slides back up so sweet spot would be high end of tempo low end of threshold would that be accurate or, or yeah, low end yeah. of threshold yeah. So right in here between three and four. So you see a lot of workouts that are called sweet spot workouts. So that's what they're doing. They're honing in that right that line right in between tempo and threshold. And you get a lot of improvement, a lot of bang for your buck. And you're right. Sweet spot isn't so sweet. It, I mean, it's sweet for the, the changes it makes in your body. But when you're doing it, you think, this is like sour spot training, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of new people that are new to cycling, they see those workouts and sweet spot. Okay, this should feel good. It doesn't feel good. No. <laughs> no. I, I think there's a different version of this chart than you've got that actually has a sweet spot column slotted in there in the middle. Okay. And it, it basically has benefits from both sides 
tempo and FTP. You're getting benefits on on everything, really. It's a, it's a good spot to train in. Yeah. Awesome. <coughs> so who here has never done, has anybody never done an FTP test or doesn't know what their FTP is? Or is everyone in here a seasoned FTP veteran? Done it. Never done it. Never done an FTP test. I don't think I've done a fun. Fun. That's fun in air quotes. They're fun, yeah. <laughs> so I say you can actually derive you can derive your FTP from, from other kind of things like Swift traces as well. So you don't need to do an FTP test. So you can, um, there are, I mean, the, the most places that are going to give you an FTP without having tested it are simply going to find the highest average 20 minute power from your ride and give you that number. So if the only ride I have ever done on this system was this uh, 30 minute long group ride, what's up with power? They would tell me that my FTP is going to be 95% of somewhere between 1.5 and 1.8 watts per kilo, which we know is not accurate for me, uh, and it may be for someone. But so I think while there are systems that can, there are advanced systems that'll take into account more than one ride to give you an accurate estimate of your FTP. In fact. Some of the most advanced software is better at getting you a more precise FTP by watching all of your rides over time rather than just a single test. But if the system you're using is only ever analyzing one ride at a time and you're never actually doing a perfect 20 minute effort, you may not be, you may not be getting an FTP number that's closely aligned with how your body, what your actual um, fitness level is. And so what would that mean? Well, if my FTP is set too low, I will do workouts and I think I'll be doing, let's say, um, threshold, but I'll actually only be in the endurance zone. So I will never get the increased muscle enzymes or I won't be, won't be getting the benefit of training at threshold because it's not actually my threshold. I think it is, but my body actually can do more because I didn't have an accurate test. And eventually it might become threshold. Right. Yeah, so I mean, well, you're right. Getting started, there are great ways to get started, but I think, I mean, the point is you want to understand all of this, right? I will, I will say that there are more than one way to measure your FTP. This 20 minute test is a great one. It's the most common. It's by no means the only way to do it, but lacking any other structure, I think that is a, a perfect starting point. Yeah, I think that's a good starting point. It's, it, and it really is, if there's any best test, that's probably it, but I don't think there's really a magic silver bullet too. I mean, even the best coaches, that's what a lot of times they'll spend time is figuring out somebody's FTP. There's there's a lot of different methods. There's some people that the 20 test doesn't work as well as others, but but yeah, you're you're right on. I think it's a great starting point. Okay, so we have a good question in Facebook here that says, will a wide difference between individuals FTP also relate to a wide difference in performance? So if the performance in question is say a 20 minute long effort or an hour long effort, absolutely. You will see a difference in performance. If we're talking about the performance between these two individuals for say a 15 second sprint, uh, FTP might not actually be as much of an indicator as to what you can put out. I mean, there, it's completely possible that somebody who has an FTP of 200 watts could out sprint somebody who has an FTP of 350 watts. If that person, uh, and this is because basically um, FTP is a measurement of a very specific time frame, and so that it's basically targeting how how much power you can hold for an hour. If you're 
if you're a track sprinter, track races are not an hour long, or at least most of them aren't. So they're going to be really honing in their power for much shorter durations. You may not be able to hold on for a full 60 minute long effort, but they might roast you in a five minute long effort. So. Do you have so a suggestion for an entry level power meter since I don't have one? So I think that the, 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 um, so we're talking, work. we're talking, we're talking <laughs> string. I mean, the best entry level having nothing is probably Z power. I mean, that's a, you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck to at least get power numbers and going on Zwift. I guess I'm assuming you probably already have that. The best budget power meter depends highly upon your specific bike configuration, number of bikes you have. There's a lot of variables in there. And if I gave you one specific answer, DC Rainmaker would rip me apart. So I would say <laughs> go to DC Rainmaker's power meters guide and read through his recommendations. He really lines it out in terms of what each type does, where it fits on your bike, how much it costs. He puts out these recommendations every year, and I would say that uh, <laughs> it's only been a couple months since his most recent one came out. So Kathy, Kathy Davenport says, I thought an FTP test was an hour long effort. What is the 20 minute FTP? Um, yeah, great question. Go ahead. I'll it, it, she's asking, an hour effort is really, really hard to put out for some people. So the 20 minute effort is just an estimate of what you can put out for an hour. 20 minutes, 95% of that usually for most people equals what it would be for an hour. So that's the answer there. Just because most people can't, can't handle an hour FTP test. That is the actual gold standard. An FTP should be what you can do for an hour, then you should ride for an hour. But a lot of people don't like that. <clears throat> and a 20 minute effort is a fairly good approximation. Yeah. A lot of people even subscribe to an eight minute double test as well. Yeah. For those same reasons, it's just easier to yeah. Yeah. manage for most people. Mm -hmm. yep. But then your factor is, what is it, 85%, I think? I think it's 90%, 90% of, the, of your eight second minutes. eight minutes. The yeah. double eight minutes, yeah. So there's a lot of ways to do it. Mm -hmm. Great questions. Great questions. I guess uh, going back a little bit to the power meter question, I would say that there's a wide range of even prices you could spend on one. Low end, I'm going to say, is in the $300 range. High end, $1,500 range. Is that... You say that's fair, Eric? Yeah. Price range? Yeah. So a lot of variables there. Whether it measures left, if it measures one side of your body or if it measures both sides, um, where it fits on your bike, how easy it is to move between bikes. Um, you can have a power meter built into your crank arm. You can have a power meter built into your pedals, power meter built into your um, chain rings power meter built into your rear hub. Um, there are power meters that sit on your handlebars and approximate it based on wind and things. Uh, and DC basically, Rainmaker has a review on that. So Basically Z power for outdoors. <laughs> yeah, uh, interesting. Literally. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, you might have talked about this, but also you might want to mention, you know, once you've done that FCC test, uh, in Swift, at least, well, in the world, real world too, but it has something you gotta, it's gonna correlate it to your weight. That's what that phosphor kilogram is. And Great maybe point. some people don't quite, uh, because they do the test and then they see, well, well, I'm looking at this for the riders with all these different phosphor kilogram. What does that mean? Good point. So, um, <clears throat> watts per kilogram is nothing more than the current power you're putting out divided by your weight in kilograms. And, uh, and the, the quick, short summary I'll give on this is when you're going up a hill, having higher watts per kilogram is going to make you much faster up the hill. On flat roads, it, uh, it's, it's less weight is given to, say, the 
power to weight ratio of watts per kilogram and a little more weight put on the absolute watts number um, just because you're not fighting gravity. Um, this all boils down to physics, but uh, yeah, good point. And so you'll, and you'll notice on flat rides, you can draft people with a lot lower watts per kilogram on the flats. It comes to the hills, you gotta be right on really close to somebody's watts per kilogram to get any drafting advantage uh, whatsoever. And you're going slower up a hill, so naturally you won't get that aerodynamic draft as much. <laughs> Another question, Facebook. So wouldn't it be fair to say that a person's FTP is much lower they can't handle the full hour? Um, I would say that's um, not necessarily their FTP. It's probably more an indicator of where their um, endurance level is at. So you should be able to you should be able to hold some number for an entire hour. Um, if you if you go too hard and couldn't hold something for a whole hour, then then you, you're trying too hard, and you basically you you didn't pace yourself for the full hour. But, I think uh, she might be saying that that uh, if somebody does a 20 minute test, and 95 percent of that predicts that whatever is their hour FTP. Uh, that that it should be lower because they they can't mentally handle that for the full hour is, is what she's saying there. I think that's, okay. a, that's a big part of it is yeah. is mentally handling an FTP workout for an hour uh, is hard, and I think that's absolutely that your body physically handling. It yep. To me. Okay. Yeah. Good point. And and a lot of the barriers that we break down are emotional, psychological barriers within ourselves. Oh yeah, to, big time. More more to, than people realize, I think. Can you explain normalized power versus average power, says Brad Curtis? Nah, maybe in three minutes. Uh, normalize, here's the 30 second digest, I, we'll get into this further. Normalized power gives you a number that is more representative of the actual stresses put on your body over average power. So here's an example. Let's say my FTP is 200. If I held my FTP <coughs> for two minutes, I would get an average <coughs> of my FTP for that two minute time frame. If instead I did nothing for a minute and then did twice my FTP for a minute, I would get an average power for that two minutes of 200 watts. But it's going to be a lot harder on my body to do that effort. Um, and so normalized power will give you a number that is representative of that difference. So it, normalized power will always be at least average power or higher. Um, and it'll be higher if you have a much more bursty power profile for a given ride. It's not a simple, fast topic to describe, but yeah, good job. <laughs> that was the 60 second description. Um, Aerobic and anaerobic systems are not mutually exclusive. Good point, Mark Abbott. I'd say uh, they are, um, <laughs> you'll get way more return on your aerobic systems through, well, you're right, they're not mutually exclusive, but you're gonna get, as the chart showed, you know, working FTP is gonna give you a lot more increase in FTP than doing sprints. Sprints are not gonna help you increase your FTP to the same level. I mean, sure, you could argue that you just doing sprints might increase your FTP if you weren't actually doing any FTP work, but not to the same level that doing FTP work is going to do. Good point. So we got about 50 more seconds here. Any more <coughs> questions? Jason Perez says 95% should be 90% for most people. Uh, that's debatable, and it, and it really goes to show there's no perfect test. You can't say that everyone's FTP is going to be exactly 95% of 20 minute effort. Uh, it doesn't work. Some people, it's 92%. Some people, sure, it might be 90%. Yep. Uh, but as far as the majority of the bell curve, uh, that works for most people. Yep. Good point. Ever, there's no perfect test.
So I want to remind everyone that we have these recordings made live on the Team ODZ website, teamodz.com slash what's up with power with dashes in between the words. Um, you see a link to the archived recordings. We're here every Wednesday, 6.30 a.m. Pacific time. We hope you have a good time. If you haven't seen the previous uh, two lessons, go ahead and check them out. And uh, we hope to see you here again next time. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Justin, can you hear me? Thanks, nice Justin. Job, Justin. Thank you all. Justin, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we agree.